betrayed Jesu Christ at the hands of his adversaries. You can look into all the symbolisms in this picture and see what the Bible tells us was going on on that night. That he was betrayed and that he was being scourged and prepared for crucifixion. We see the religious figures, we see both ancient uh, religious, the 4th century uh, Catholic on the left, and uh, we see the modern Catholic priest in the front here, uh, down on his knees uh, in a mock, uh, mock worship, but actually spitting on him. And uh, then in the background we see the demons lurking. Uh, demons are lurking in the background uh, and that again shows uh, the spirit realm that is existing here with us that we don't normally see but at certain times uh, things may happen in certain people's lives that will cause the frequencies to be just right to where they'll actually see things in the spirit realm and have uh, visions perhaps visions uh, of an angel uh, speaking to them or perhaps uh, visions of uh, demonic things, but whatever, it's another realm that exists. Demons are really, uh, when they take on an evil look, it's really just uh, a kind of a sidetrack, just something to cause people to uh, possibly be frightened into uh, false practices and false beliefs that they could be led to because of these uh, evil looking things. But in reality, we know that scripture says uh, Satan uh, disguises as an angel of light or Satan masquerades as an angel of light. The reason for this is that he can try to deceive the very elect. Scripture says he'll even if possible deceive the very elect and he can't do it by coming on as this uh, evil looking demon. He's going to do it by coming on as the angel of light, just like the scripture says. He's going to pretend and he's going to pose as a, a, an entity that is good and benevolent and this way try to deceive the people. So the these uh, evil looking demons lurking in the background are actually, it's just a symbolic thing just to show that they're there's always an evil presence that is there. There's good and evil. They both exist simultaneously. And they're both going to uh, work at your mind. And you have to be the one to decide which path you're going to take. And you have to be the one to not allow yourself to be deceived. And so if the deceiving angel is coming on as a benevolent thing, but uh, somewhere down the track he's going to use this all to lead you in the wrong direction. And that's why it's important for you to do what the scripture says. When Yesu said, seek and you shall find, that word from the Greek uh, New Testament, where it's translated from, actually means to research and investigate. So it means you have to take an active role. You can't just uh, see this uh, glowing figure coming on and, and telling you the way to take. You've got to get into the scripture. You've got to study it out. You've got to get into any means that you possibly can find, any way that you can find to study and to dig and to get deeper. And then you have to pray and ask God to uh, let the Holy Spirit reveal to you the truth. And then as you go, as you go along, you have to be ready to release things that turn out to be falsehoods, things that you maybe believe so dearly all your life long, you may have to let go of because you're going to find out that they were falsehoods disguised as light. And you're going to have to take the truth that's shown to you and continue on. So therefore, seek and you shall find. Study, research, and investigate. 
and it'll be shown unto you. But pray always for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. As we move in here for a closer look, let me get closer in what we can see here. Through the blindfold, you can see his eyes. When they mocked him and they said, Lord, tell us, who is it that struck you? And he kept silent. They said, like a lamb led to the slaughter, he opened not his mouth. But this uh, painting is showing us that in reality, he could see, he could know who they are. Uh, scripture says that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. And the scripture tells us that that God is in all of us. And so, with God in us, there is uh, there is nothing that cannot be known. There is nothing that cannot be revealed. And uh, he was showing me the people who posed as his friends and are now coming out of the darkness to show that they're not really his friends. Here's the little one just hiding over here in the darkness, lurking, carrying his evil root. And what this is showing us here, he's dressed as a minister. And it's that don't uh, take somebody's word just because they're a minister or a priest. It doesn't mean that they're going to be bringing you the truth. You have to do your own digging. You have to do your own studying. You have to find your way. You have to find your path. See here we can see this this old priest here. He's spitting. Just like the scripture said, they spat upon him. And he's spitting out his old tobacco juice. And you can see here that uh, from the scourging that they've been gouging flesh from him. Here's the old serpent coming right out of the floor. And uh, when we look here, you see all the, here's the coins with the blood. The blood drips from his fingertips and the blood is dripping down in the coin. It's showing us that it's the blood money, the 30 pieces of silver that Judas threw back into the temple. 30 pieces of silver that he sold the master for. And here we see a little uh, 1984 25 cent piece, see, from the United States. So it shows the United States, we're getting in our two bits as you would say it. So, uh, there's been a lot of betrayal coming out of the United States. And it has been the English language through, uh, it was in the United States that the name of Yesu was first changed to Jesus uh, just a little over 300 years ago. We see here all these uh, symbols and their scripture verses again available for the viewer to be able to look these scripture verses up and read and see just exactly what is happening in uh, different parts of the painting. Here's uh, the uh, Lucifer on the belt here. And uh, when we look here and we see all the gouging, it doesn't even give us one little fraction of what the suffering would have really been. If it was even this bad, it would have been a horrifying thing, but it was it was way worse. It was so bad that uh, in Isaiah, uh, I believe it's chapter 1, verse 6, or, or somewhere in that vicinity, that it says that there was not one spot of sound flesh left on his body from the sole of the foot all the way to the top of the head. But uh, wounds and bruises and putrefying sores is the way the King James Bible put it. But uh, uh, other, from other translations and from the original, it's uh, uh, open wounds and fresh dripping uh, wounds. And here you see the face is so beat up, swollen, because uh, the number of people that came before him and punched him in the face, it was over 350 people that walked in front of him and mocked him and each took a turn punching him in the face. And here is the 4th century Catholic uh, grave digger uniform with the swastikas. And uh, 
is because at that time the swastika was a, actually a symbol of the sun god and worship of the sun god. And the uh, Catholicism came out of the sun religions of Rome and uh, that's why the swastika is here. Um, when Hitler picked up the swastikas, he actually got them, uh, you know, from the ancient uh, cultures, and even especially from uh, the Hindus uh, in India, where all the temples have swastikas within them. We see down here in the corner the, the uh, money bag that uh, Judas collected. Uh, he was the money keeper, and when here he had the 30 pieces of silver for the betrayal money. Uh, and then the, uh, the little bag is actually shaped like a fish here. That also in the ancient ancient uh, pagan religions, the fish god uh, was uh, Dagon. Dagon or Dagon. And here we see on the name plate that was going to be nailed to the cross, and here's the name of Yesu written in the Hebrew letters uh, across the top line. Uh, and it's uh, Yesu Hanatsri, uh, uh, which uh, often translated Yesu and Nazareth, but Natsri actually can mean the uh, the watchman. And it's the uh, it's also the name for uh, Christians. And here's the. Uh, the Greek on the second line and the Latin in the, in the lower line. And here on the chair it says uh, with the ancient Greek, Greek symbol uh, for the theta. Uh, so the word spelled out here is uh, thanatos, it means death. So he's sitting in the death chair here at this point. And then over on the other side here, down behind the, uh, the bad priest here, we see a little piece of paper here with the Thanatos scratched onto it being the mark of death uh, and then uh, from Matthew uh, 26 verse 66 and the way it's shaded in you can see the 666 on it and then on the bottom of the shoes let's look and see what we got here see cat's paw cat's paw was the name of a uh, uh, heel that they used to always use that when you had to have your heels replaced on your shoes. And here's uh, 2 Corinthians 11 verses 14 uh, and 15. And then over on the other shoe here, you see again the, the cat's paw won't slip. That was the uh, symbol and the motto. And here's Matthew 27, 24 through 25. So we've got uh, the cat's paw won't slip, but ironically, they're on the on the bottoms of the feet of the uh, fallen priests with the scripture verse that uh, match up with it. And they took a stick, and it said they pounded them on the head with a stick. They were driving the thorns in from the crown of thorns. that root that the scripture says that the wicked is like a root plucked up out of the ground and that's because uh, when that root is plucked out of the ground it, it's uh, no longer a source of life it can't uh, get any type of uh, nourishment into it and then the plant withers and dies and the old priest here 
we can see right on the tip of his nose uh, all the uh, blood veins, they call them gin blossoms, that uh, from all the great amount of alcohol that he's been consuming. And on his hat, on his crown here, we have the Roman numerals. Uh, at that time, it was before they had a letter M as a numeral, but uh, the numerals that are, are shown here uh, are numerals uh, that were the original in the Roman numbering system. And when you add them all up, it comes up to 666.